listening skills, teaching listening skills. Well, obviously, I mean, the, the silly, sounding thing to say, but the truth, to you just have to do it a lot, to listen a lot. It's not something that you can do, I think, in an isolated format and just do a little bit. And when you're listening, it doesn't do any good if it's just sort of like sound in the background. You have to understand what you're listening to. So I think that what you need to do is listen very carefully, very closely. It's probably better when you're teaching listening to listen through earphones rather than live because the sound gets diffused this way. So if you listen carefully through earphones, and in particular, uh, at least when you're starting out, if you listen and read at the same time, because I've had that experience with some of your classmates, you know, they're just trying to listen and they don't hear the sounds, even though they listen over and over again, they can't catch the meaning. So the first time, the first couple of times you listen to something, if you have the text there, you, you're listening to it and reading it, then you can take the text away and then you can listen, okay, and then you'll understand more clearly rather than missing the sounds. Also, an expert in IT, we know. So, doctor, please uh, help us uh, how to use IT to teach listening effectively. Okay, uh, I'm not an expert in IT. I just know how to find resources, and the resources that I know how to find are kind of what I just described to, to her, to you all. I mean, there's so many things that you can find that you can listen to and read at the same time. Uh, give those to your students. There's so many resources I showed you in our class, so many uh, online libraries of texts, and also of accompanying audio files. So if you find a good story, and you listen to it, and you read it at the same time, uh, that's just an excellent way. So there's so many resources out there for IT. I've also showed you some of the uh, phonetic training sites. When you're listening, you realize you can't hear a particular sound like that. Was at the University of Iowa site for phonetic training where when you realize that you're listening and you can't hear something, if you see exactly how the mouth is making and the sound is making it. So you need to know about phonetic sites like that. Uh, and then, I mean, you ask me about listening, but listening and speaking go hand in hand. So that program that I showed you, you know, Audacity, or any other sound recording file where when you take the, the thing that you're listening to, you actually see a graphic readout of it, that, that those blue blobs moving around make the mountains and peaks. If I were recording my voice and you were listening to it, you would see that. And so you would try to listen, and if you tried to speak along as well, and you saw how different yours was from mine, that would show you at which places you had a real hard time hearing and making the sounds. So these are all free resources that I was found to use myself and I've been able to show you. I think that uh, as you know, in Vietnam and around the world, your students get more and more technology in the classroom, you'll be able to implement these things in a way that will really help them. And just as I've done with our class, you know, when you teach this way too, if everybody does have their own station, you can give a lot more individual attention. Okay, I can give you, we're all listening, you all have a story that you're listening to and also maybe recording it sometimes. And you can choose a story you like, it's easy for you, and you can choose a story you like, so you're working here, and I can come over here and check on you, and you can work on there. So in terms of individual progress uh, and you know independence and learning, I think that there are a lot of things that we can get. Mm -hmm. Yes, not only in the classroom, but also autonomous learning. Yes, yes, yes. thank you. Uh, thank you, Rhonda. Okay, bye. Can you more later? Okay, yes. yes. All right. Yes. Hi, I'm Allison from the Canadian Living Test Kitchen. Today we're going to show you how to make a folded omelette. Omelettes can make a wonderful lunch or dinner entree. They're quick economical and easy to make. Here's what you need to get started. We have butter, three eggs already cracked, some water, some salt and some pepper, and then as our fillings today we are going to be using tomatoes, 
Swiss cheese and chopped chives. So let me get started. We have three eggs here. I'm going to place them in our bowl. I also want to add a little bit of water, about a tablespoon or so. And I have a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm just going to whisk our eggs together here until they're a little bit frothy. Now we're using water in place of cream in our, our omelet here because we find that the water creates a lot of steam which then evaporates and makes a really light airy omelet. Whereas cream can sometimes make an omelet a little bit heavier. An omelet really should only take two to three minutes. First thing I'm going to do is melt our butter in the pan. You want to make sure it's foamy. So swirl it around in the pan to make sure it gets all over. Right, now that that's melted, I'm going to tip our egg mixture into the pan. As you can see, it's cooking already at the edges. Just be sure to run your spatula along the edges and move those cooked edges into the center while tipping your pan to allow that uncooked egg mixture to run off to the sides. Continue to cook until underside is set, but top is still a little bit runny. This is your cue to add your fillings. I have my chives, which I'm sprinkling over top here, my Swiss cheese, and the heat is going to melt this cheese nicely. And I also have some chopped tomatoes. And that's it. It's almost set now. When I fold it, the residual heat in the omelet is going to finish cooking this omelet. Filling options are really only limited by your imagination.